Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the third video in the series of Searching for the Pattern. In our last video, we contrasted the blueprint pattern method with a more theological narrative pattern method. And that both use commands, examples, and inferences to seek out the pattern or to understand the pattern. For the blueprint, it is finding the specifications. We find the particular rules, the particular uh, pieces of the blueprint that we then collect and put together to form the whole. Whereas in the narrative pattern, we're not using commands and examples and inferences so much to find the particulars of a blueprint as we are to understand the mystery of God in Christ, to understand the story, to understand who God is, what who Jesus is, and what mission Jesus had, and what is the mission of God. And that's third, that second pattern seeking, that theological approach is the one I want to think about a little bit more in this video. So if we think about reading the Bible for the theological story, we're actually engaged in a kind of a three-step method. We're reading scripture, seeking to understand scripture in its context, in its story, in its history, in its letters, its genres. Uh, we want to understand scripture in its own context and read the context of the, of the text itself understand what is communicating. At the same time, when we read scripture, the thing we want to more fundamentally understand, what we want to discern and to uh, probe and seek to um, more fully embrace is the mystery of Christ. This is what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3. When Paul says, you know, I've already written some things about God's grace here. And I think he's talking about the first two chapters. And how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words. A reading of which, notice the language, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. We read scripture, Paul says. I want you to read what I wrote. We read scripture in order to understand the mystery of Christ. The mystery of God revealed in Christ. The mystery of Christ communicated to us by the Spirit. The mystery of God dwelling in Christ bodily. The fullness of God dwelling in Christ bodily. And what God has done and is doing and will do in Christ by the Spirit. That's what we want to understand. Because when we understand it, not at a mere superficial level, but when we understand it so that our heart is formed and shaped by it, then we learn how to embody it. We are able to embody it when we understand it. And by the power of God's grace and the power of God's spirit, our hearts formed into the image of Christ. And by the spirit, we are empowered to embody that image in the world. And so we embody the gospel. We embody the mystery of Christ in our assemblies and in our ministries, in our families, in our society, and wherever we go and whatever we do, so that we might live worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this is a different reading strategy than looking for the pattern, because instead of looking for the mystery of Christ, we're, we're, we want to find the pattern. And we reduce the pattern to particular marks of the true church. And we turn it into an ecclesiological, into a church thing, rather than into a Christ thing or a God thing. We turn it in searching for a thing, a pattern, rather than seeking to probe the mystery of the person of God revealed in Jesus by the Spirit. 
I think we can take our cue from this, from Jesus. That we learn to read the Bible like Jesus did. In particular, in Matthew, we, we have these texts that refer to the mercy of God. In the retext, Jesus talks about mercy. Matthew 9, Matthew 12, and Matthew 23. In Matthew 9, Jesus is attending the meal at Matthew's house. It's a gathering that some leaders find offensive. And Jesus confronts them with their offense. And he says, you know, it's not the, not the well, the people who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. And so he tells them, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Quoting Hosea 6, verse 6. Jesus takes a principle out of Hosea 6, 6. Uses the language of Hosea 6, 6. To take this principle and apply it in this context. That mercy in this context is eating at Matthew's house. Rather than sacrifice. That there's something deeper about who God is that says... Mercy, not sacrifice. And Jesus uses the same verse from Hosea in Matthew chapter 12, when his disciples are confronted by Jewish leaders about breaking the Sabbath because they're eating on the Sabbath, preparing food on the Sabbath. And Jesus says, if you had known what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. You would understood the scripture. If you'd read this scripture the way I read it, if you'd understood that what this scripture is getting at is about mercy, not sacrifice, that is about not using the Sabbath to uh, condemn the innocent, but rather recognizing the principle of mercy in providing food for those who are hungry. Mercy, not sacrifice. It's about how you read the Bible. Do you read the Bible with the lens of looking for a blueprint in order to confirm who's the true church and who isn't? Or do you read the Bible with the eyes of mercy, seeking the presence of God, seeking how God sees the world with through the eyes of mercy rather than sacrifice? Or how God sees the world through the weightier matters, which includes mercy as well as justice and faith, Matthew 23, verse 23. Now, some suggest, well, you know, you're supposed to do both. Well, yeah, you do mercy and sacrifice. Do mercy and Even though tithing herbs is not commanded in the Torah, but Jesus says, if you want to tie of herbs, go ahead and tie of herbs. That's fine. Just don't neglect the weightier matters, the things that are more important. And when we read the Bible with a set of lenses that flattens everything out, and says everything is equally important, then we don't read the Bible like Jesus did. Because Jesus said, there are weightier matters, mercy, not sacrifice. Mercy, justice, and faith, not whether you tied your herb or not. In fact, Jesus said, you know, what's most important is love God and love your neighbor. And that loving your neighbor is more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. More important. When you read Leviticus, you might think burnt offerings are pretty important, and they are. And the Sabbath is pretty important, and it is. But what's more important? Love God, you love your neighbor. What's more important is mercy, faith, and justice. Reading the Bible like Jesus doesn't just doesn't flatten the Bible out, doesn't turn the Bible into a big blueprint. 
Rather, reading the Bible like Jesus is to read it through the eyes of God and the work of God in the world, the mercy of God, the love of God, and the love of neighbor, and justice, and faith. This, these are the, the centers. These are the lenses. These are the conclusions of a faithful reading of the Bible. And when our conclusions are more about true church, false church, our conclusions are more about what kind of music do you use? Our conclusions is more about hand clapping in church or whatever. It, when our conclusions are more about the blueprint and the, the, the particulars of the blueprint that we have constructed and what belongs in the blueprint, what doesn't belong in the blueprint, and we argue and divide about it, we're not reading the Bible like Jesus. So Paul tells us that there is a rule. He says, may I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule or canon, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. What is this rule? What rule are we supposed to follow? It's the word canon. And, and canon is what we usually typically talk about in terms of New Testament canon, Old Testament canon, a standard, a measuring stick. But Paul's talking about a rule before there's a New Testament. I mean, it's possible Galatians is the first writing of the New Testament. Maybe, maybe not. But there's a rule before there's a New Testament. What is the rule? The rule is not a blueprint specified written document the rule is the cross of christ and new creation it's what paul has been talking about in the whole of galatians the gospel the gospel what god has done in christ by the spirit that's the rule the cross of christ where we are to conform ourselves to the cross that we are to become like jesus in the self-giving of the cross that the Reign of God in new creation as new creatures. This is the rule by which we walk. We walk according to the story that God is at work accomplishing in the world. We live according to the mission of God, exemplified and grounded in the cross of Jesus and the new creation that Jesus works, which brings peace and mercy upon God's people. There's a rule before there's a New Testament. And the rule is not a written document. The rule is the story of God in Christ by the Spirit. We have a document that tells us about that story. We call it the New Testament. We call it the Scripture. We call it the whole Bible. But the point is not to generate a blueprint. The point is to call us into a life of following Jesus to embody the story of God in our own world. So in reading the Bible in light of the story, we ask, what is the gospel? The gospel is the story of God from creation, the new creation. The gospel finds its climax in Jesus, the Messiah. The gospel is the good news of the reign of God come to earth. And the gospel is what Jesus preached good news of the kingdom of God it calls us to repent and enter into that kingdom and participate in the ministry of Jesus to do what Jesus began to do and to teach what Jesus taught about the kingdom of God. And we see the early church embodying that and living it out and continuing the ministry of Jesus. So we identify the gospel we understand the mystery of Christ. And then we ask, how do we participate in that gospel? How do we share in the life and ministry of Jesus? How do we continue the ministry of Jesus? How do we conform to the image of Christ? What does it mean to look like Christ and be Christ? To embrace the mind of Christ? To become self-giving just as Jesus humbled himself and became a human being. So we humble ourselves for the sake of others. 
even to obedience on a cross. How do we participate in the gospel? Baptism is participation in the gospel. Lord's Supper is participation in the gospel. It's not about a blueprint specification. It's about following Jesus and about participating in the mission of Jesus, which is the mission of God. What does that mean for our own particular lives, embodying a life worthy of the gospel? Following Jesus to a cross, following Jesus into the water, following Jesus to tables, following Jesus in his ministry of liberation, following Jesus in his ethic, in his cruciform life. That's why we read the Bible. Not to find a blueprint that we construct out of the data. We read the Bible to enter into the story of Jesus and to become a participant in the mission of God as a disciple of Jesus. So which pattern? One pattern says, okay, we have to be obedient to this specified blueprint. Even though you can't find the blueprint exactly as a blueprint in Scripture, we construct the blueprint and say, okay, here are the five things. And, here, and we pull them from all different sections of Scripture, and then we construct this blueprint and say, okay, now do that. As opposed to entering into the narrative of God and seeing who Jesus is, who God is, what the mission of God is, and becoming a participant in that narrative so that that story becomes our story in conformity to the image of Christ. One is kind of a a legal pursuit where we want to get it right and be right. And so we got to get the right pattern. We got to discern the right pattern, even though other people come up with different patterns when they use the same methods. And the church divides and divides and divides. Or do we read the story and confess the story, how God created the world and sent the Son and then sent the Spirit and calls us to become people of the Spirit following Jesus? Which pattern is it? One pattern, based up on legal conformity, turns into a life of fearful perfectionism. Did I get it right? Do I have to get it all right? If I'm not all right, if I err in one thing, I, I err in all. I have to make sure I get this right. And my assurance depends upon it. And I live in fear of not getting it right. Or is the conformity to the gospel, the embodiment of the gospel, a life that seeks transformation, that recognizes we're not perfect, we're not going to get it right. But we are disciples who seek to become like Jesus, in word and deed, in assembly and ministry, in family and society. We want to embody the gospel. The pattern are we to follow? I think. We embrace the life of God in Jesus by the Spirit and seek the kingdom of God first in all things. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.